bless the Lord. God is good. Amen. Let's place the service in his hands. I'll just pray at this time. Father God, once again, we come before you, giving you thanks for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for today. A day, dear Lord, that some have not seen. A day that we will never see again. But one that you have given us when we can come into your house and bless your name. I pray that as we come this morning, that we will come with the mind and the heart to just worship you. To give you the thanks and the praise that is due unto your name. Because you and you alone are worthy. Today, Lord, I know that circumstances and situations may have come through the door. But I pray as we spend this time in your presence, that your Holy Spirit will minister to each and every one of us today that as we praise you as we worship you as we lift you up that you will sort out our circumstances in advance god we give you thanks we know dear lord that there is much that you will accomplish today in this service have your way with us dear lord from the worship team musicians technicians the host at the door the one that will bring the word let all things dear father god be done to the glory of your name have your way amongst us today meet the needs of your children as we bless you and we lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I will worship with all of my heart. Why? God is truly worthy of my praise. He's more than worthy. Hallelujah.
yes you are Lord you alone are worthy yes you are Lord worthy to receive all my praise hallelujah you and you alone are worthy hallelujah I will give I will give you all my praise. You alone, Lord, yes, I love to worship. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, you alone are worthy, Lord. We're going to magnify the name of the Lord. Why? Simply because he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. Hallelujah! 
Bless your name, O oh God. Blessed be the rock. Hallelujah. Upon that rock, we have victory. Amen. We can claim victory over our circumstance today because we are resting on the solid rock. Victory in Jesus. We're going to go back to a hymn right now. I pray you remember it. <laughs> Some writer said, I heard an old, old story. How a savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. Oh, victory today in Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have we got any blessed people here this morning? Your bank account may not reflect what you want it to reflect, but you're blessed. And in some cases, you may be overflowing, but we're still blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to bless the offering this morning. We have the card machine available at the back. So if you're paying by a card, feel free to see the ushers at the back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise. You are an awesome God. You are our Jehovah Jireh. All that we need, whether it's financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically, it's all in you. And we thank you with grateful hearts this morning. As we come today to release a sacrifice back into your kingdom, we pray and ask that you will bless every hand that gives. Lord, you know the heart of your people, those who are unable to give for whatever various circumstances. Meet them at their need today, Jesus. I pray, Lord God, you will rebuke the, de de the devourer, hallelujah, for our sake today, Jesus. We ask that you will restore the years that the caterpillar and the canker worm have stolen. We declare it's our time to reap the harvest in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. It's our time to reap the harvest, whether it's financially, whether it's sold for the kingdom. We're declaring, we take back what the devil has stole from us. We declare victory in Jesus' name in every area of our life. We ask that you'll seal every hold. Seal every hole in our life, Father God. Restore. Restore the baskets, Father God. And we declare overflow in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for the open doors. We thank you for all things. And we ask and we declare in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is worship and giving. The ushers will direct you at this time. We're going to trade our sorrows for the joy. The joy, the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a trade this morning.
to your will, to your way. Yes, Lord. We agree. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. Bless the Lord. Just before I invite Sister Jackie Facey to come with the notices today, we have some birthdays to celebrate. Amen. 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 Okay, good. You're still with me. Okay, so today I have a pile of cards. We have Charlotte Letman on the 15th. We have Ebony Johnson on the 17th. Two for Ebony Johnson. Must be a special one. And then I have two cards here for Nyla Rodney, whose birthday is on the 19th of April. Nyla. Sorry, my bad. Nyla Rodney on the 19th of April. C major. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy Happy birthday when it comes. Sister Jackie, I'll hand over to you for the notices. Good morning, girl. Good morning. Is it still morning? Yeah, it still is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good yes. all the time. Amen, amen. Okay, for the notices for this week, first of all, I'm going to start off with the national events. Uh, so we have the National uh, Convention, which is going to be on the 23rd to the 25th of August in Newport in Wales. And the registration is open. Please see the national website for further information. Um, I understand there should be... Yeah, there it is. Okay, district notices... Uh, please save a date for the Community Unity Festival, which will be held on Sunday the 14th of July. And now for our own local tabernacle services, notices, sorry. Uh, Monday we have fasting at home, 6 a.m. till 1 p.m. And in church we've got prayer 12 till 1. Tuesday we have parent and toddler group, which is 10 till 11.30. And the food bank will be here at 12 noon till 2 p.m. Then in the evening, we have Bible study, 7.30 till 9 p.m. Brother Gerald will be teaching on practical commitments on what we teach. Okay. Wednesday, we have women's discipleship. Uh, sorry, my false teeth are coming out. <laughs> I'll set them in properly. We have women's discipleship. Oh, my goodness me. Discipleship. I got there in the end. Ministries. And they'll be meeting at church at 7.30 p.m. And the topic of discussion will be based around books and poetry club. More info will be sent out later by the WhatsApp group. Uh, feel free to bring drinks and snacks uh, as the meeting will be very informal. Okay. Now, next Sunday, we have uh, Sunday the 21st, we have our guest speaker, who is our administrative bishop, Cleon Grandison. And we're asking for all members and friends in attendance, uh, please come early as church will start promptly at 11 a.m. We have a prayer breakfast at Willinor on the 27th of April. The time will be confirmed. Also on the 27th of April, 
we have brother Steve Maynard, who will be leading a fundraising walk from Willanore to Wolverhampton. Woo! <laughs> Forms will be at the reception, and if you ask Brother Steve also, um, and he will shortly have the details for us, Brother Steve. Thank you. Okay. Youth notices. Join us for an epic night of play, pizza, purpose with Elevation Youth. Fuel up with delicious pizza, dive into exciting times and discover the deeper meaning behind it all. Get ready to have a blast and find your purpose in the, per in the process. See you there. And that's open to all ages between 5 to 25. Glenn? No? Okay, sorry. We'll move on. Uh, we're also going to be having a National Sports Day on the 4th of May. Please see Sister Tracy for any information as she's looking to have a basketball and netball team. Okay, thank you all. God bless. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jackie. We are well informed once again. Okay. Bless the Lord. We are almost at time to hear the word. Amen. We're going to share in worship together before we pray for the speaker this morning. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. We're going to shout to the Lord this morning. Amen.
about somebody, let's give it up for Jesus in this house today. Let's give it up for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's give it up for the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Let's give it up for him who is everlasting to everlasting. He who was, he who is, and he who is to come. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for the rose of Sharon, for the lily of the valley, for the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for the ancient of days. Let's give it up for the way maker. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Give it up for your king, your savior. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for him who is coming again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come to let somebody know today that Jesus is coming again. I don't care what the philosophers say. I don't care what the naysayers say. I don't care what the atheists say. I don't care what anybody says. I'm here to let you know that this book says that our Lord Jesus is coming again. And I want to ask a question even before we get into the word today. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Hallelujah. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? The signs of the times are telling us they are evident. We can see rule wars. We can see rulers of wars. We can see earthquakes in diverse places. We can see the attitudes of men. Hallelujah. I said he's coming again. If ever there was a time not to play games, it's now. If ever there was a time to get off the fence, it's now. If ever there was a time to make your calling and election sure, it is now. If you have come into this house today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I admonish you, today is the day of your salvation. Hallelujah. Today is the day. Don't put it off for another day. Today is your day to say, yes, Lord, I want to make it in. I want to know that I'm secure in you. Every week we are hearing of people that we know, loved ones that we are close to passing away. Remember a time when death just seemed to be so distant, seemed to be so far away from our door. But now literally every week, every single week we're hearing of somebody that is close to us has passed away glory to God just two days ago I heard that my sister's good friend hallelujah passed away in Birmingham one day short of her 60th birthday and that age group of people who are passing away now I remember one time we used to bury older people but now 40s, 50s, early 60s, it seems death is no respecter of persons. Are you ready? Me, I don't fear death. I have no fear of dying because I know that my soul is right with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be absent from this body means that I am present with Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. What a wonderful prospect to look forward to if you know Jesus. If you don't know him, I encourage you today. Let today be the day that you surrender your heart to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Boy, I'm gonna have to lick off this fan, you know, because <laughs> I don't wanna catch no consumption up in here. Breeze just had... <laughs> Thank you. Oh, glory to God. Will you turn your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Matthew? We're going to be talking about a very poignant topic today, one that I think will affect or has affected at some stage every single person in here. I don't think anybody's absolved at all from the subject matter today. But I feel the Lord has a word for this house today. Praise God. And I pray... That as the word, word lands in your heart, that it will find a nesting place. A place where you give this word some consideration and seriously do something about acting upon it. We don't get up here to preach because we like the sound of our own voices. But we get up here to preach the word of God as he has laid it upon our hearts because he has a word for the congregation. I was wrestling this week with what to preach about. Praise God. Even Friday, I had another message in my mind that I wanted to preach. But the Lord said, no, 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 no. This one is the one that you need to preach today. God knows why. He truly knows why. Glory to God. Will you turn your Bible with me to the book of Matthew, the 18th chapter? Praise God. We're going to be reading from verses 21 to 35. That's Matthew the 18th chapter, we're going to be reading from verses 21 to 25. And the word of the Lord reads thus. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall, I, shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Hmm. <laughs> I haven't even started yet. Everybody just go, mm. <laughs> Up to seven times, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me. And I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion. He released him and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Glory to God. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant. Mm. I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Oh, praise the Lord. The word that I'd like to share in this house this Sunday morning or afternoon is entitled Forgiveness. You've got to let it go. Glory to God. 
forgiveness. You've got to let it go. Praise God. I just know that this word is going to resonate with the majority of this congregation in here. As I said earlier, forgiveness is the thing that affects all of us at some stage in our lives. Whether it, is, whether it be for us to forgive someone, praise God, or whether we are seeking forgiveness from somebody else, or whether we need forgiveness for something that we have done. Every single one of us will understand when I'm talking and sharing with you today about being able to forgive. As I stand here, I'm 58 years of old. 50 years of old. <laughs> I have 58 years of age. 58 years old. And I've wrestled badly at times with forgiveness. So, you know, I've shared many times, and I like to keep it real and be as open as I possibly can. That growing up, you know, we lived in a house where my father wasn't the nicest person you've heard me say it many 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 times and i used to lie in my bed as a, a six seven year old and hear my father mistreating my mom and it was something that always resonated with me as a child but then you know when you're too young to do anything about what you're hearing or you want to do something trust me and i used to feel in my heart this anger welling up in me to do something, even at six, five, you know. And I just felt that this spirit of, like, you can call it a spirit of murder, was welling up inside of me from a very young age. Because I wanted to kill him. I'm not lying to you, I'm, I wanted to kill him. You know, us as men, there's just something about a, a son's relationship with his mom. Amen. Especially when your mom is of a quiet and humble disposition. It wouldn't hurt a fly. But then to hear all of these things what I heard, it just made me constantly angry. And I used to, in my mind, I was seeking revenge from a young age. And I said, when I get to 16, I don't know why I kept saying 16. I thought, when I get to 16, I'm going to do him something. Seriously. When I get to 16, and when I got to 16, I was strong enough i think to take him on and i feel like i dealt with him <laughs> you know but what i'm trying to say is that i had this feeling in my in my heart for my for my dad that i just couldn't forgive him for the things that he did you know my i had a when i hear men speak about their fathers and speak well of having a good relationship it always touches me because it's not something that i have ever known I've never known what it means to have a father that you could go to and sit with and talk to and share and laugh and joke and back in the day have a beer with and all of them kind of things. I don't know that. It's foreign to me. Praise God. And here I am even at 58 years of age and it took me such a long, long, long time even after I had been saved to deal with the unforgiveness that was in my heart. You know, I just thought that salvation would just switch a button and that forgiveness would come and that I'd be able to say, Pops, I forgive you for everything. But no, 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 no. And I know it works like that for some people. And praise God, I'm glad that it's happened that way for you. But for me, it was a struggle. And I understand that forgiveness can be instantaneous. But I also understand that forgiveness sometimes needs to be a process that the Holy Spirit is working with you through. But to bring you to a place where you can, you can, you can, you can have forgiveness for a, an, an individual. And it took me literally last year, and I'm being honest with you, to fully get to that place where I could forgive my father. Where I could look him in the eye and tell him that I loved him. You know, in spite of everything, the Holy Spirit took, it took years for him working with me on the inside to bring me to that place where I could look him in the eye and say, Dad, I love you. And, you know, he just looked at me and 
started to cry. You know, it's as if something just broke in him. You know, when God does something, he does it right. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I know just that little story is just a prelude to what I'm going to preach today. I haven't even started my message. But it's just a prelude to, to, to let us know that every single one of us who is carrying unforgiveness in our heart, we've got to get to the place at some time or other when we let it go. The topic of forgiveness then is one that without question stirs up human emotions like no other. Even as I was talking then, even in my big age, every time I talk about it, I still feel it. You know, every boy wants his dad to be his hero. Isn't it? Yeah? Isn't it? Every boy wants his dad. I want my son to look at me, my sons to look at me as their hero. But when you don't get it, it does something to you. That even as a big man, you still feel feel it oh come on somebody so the topic of forgiveness then is without question is one that stirs up human emotions like no other it is a topic then that if done with meaning from a godly perspective it has the ability to end every negative relationship it has the ability to bring harmony to our churches because sometimes we have church brothers sisters, family members who are in church who, who still are carrying unforgiveness for one another. Can I get an amen? But then again, if I don't get an amen, I'm good with that. Amen. Because not everybody wants people to know that they're walking around with things in their heart that they need to let go of. Are you hearing me today, somebody? Hallelujah. 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 So if this topic forgiveness is dealt with from a godly perspective, it has the ability to end every negative relationship, to bring harmony to our churches. It has the ability to bring healing to our community and nations. Hallelujah. And it also has the ability to prevent the vast majority of armed conflicts. If people would just forgive one another. Hallelujah. Forgiveness from a dictionary perspective is typically defined as the process of concluding or, or ending resentment, indignation, or anger because of a perceived offense. It also means ceasing to demand punishment or to seek restitution. To stop being angry because someone has hurt you or offended you you've got to let it go hallelujah for a deeper and more meaningful analysis of the word forgiveness it is to the word of god to which we must turn we must look at this word forgiveness from an old testament and a new testament perspective to gain the full understanding as to what forgiveness means and what it doesn't mean. Some of us get it twisted when we talk about forgiveness. I will forgive you, but I never forget. <laughs> That's not forgiveness. I will never forget what you did to me. <laughs> Amen. Because somebody identify what I'm saying. Yes, you sit in there and look in our stush. Yes, but I bet you somebody in here said that before. Oh, glory to God. The whole Bible then is a message of forgiveness. This entire Holy Writ is a book all about forgiveness. God's forgiveness to my, for mankind. But the first recorded act of forgiveness is seen in Genesis 3 and verse 21. Hallelujah. Here we see the Lord himself cover Adam and Eve's shame and guilt and nakedness with a tunic of animal skin. Blessed be the name of Jesus. The progenitors or the beginners then of the human race had fallen into sin and out of favor with their creator. We all know the story. That Adam and Eve had fallen. Hallelujah. 
And the Bible tells us that they tried to hide themselves from God. They tried to cover themselves with fig leaves to cover their shame and to cover their nakedness. But well, this scripture here in Genesis 3 and 21, it shows us the foreshadowing of how the blood of Jesus would forgive us and cover our sin, our shame, and our guilt. Hallelujah. The covering that Adam and Eve used was not sufficient to cover their sin. So God slew an animal in that garden. And he took its skin. And on that skin, I believe, were droplets of blood. And when he put those skins as tunics on Adam and Eve, it acted as a covering for them. And it was a foreshadowing of the same blood of Jesus Christ who would cover our sin, who would cover our shame, who would cover our nakedness. Can I get an amen in the house? Oh, glory to God. That was the very first sign of forgiveness in the scripture. The blood covering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 9 and 22. And by, it says, and by the law, almost all things are purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness. And when we continue to look through the Old Testament, the first five books in particular, we see the forgiveness of God continuously with the children of Israel. We see the, 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 the tabernacle. We see the high priest once a year slaying an animal taking that animal into the holy of holies praise god so to atone for the sins of the people forgiving the those who are guilty every single year the people could come and have their sins forgiven and this system continued throughout the entire five books the pentateuch hallelujah and it showed forth continually the forgiving nature of God. In 1 Kings 8, verses 30, verses 34, verses 36, 39 to 50, we see Solomon constantly asking God for the, gift, for the, for the forgiveness of his people as he dedicates the temple. The Hebrew word for forgiveness here is the word solak or solok which means to spare or to pardon and also being ready at all times to forgive. Solomon is asking God to continuously spare the guilty with acts of forgiveness. And another more startling word for forgiveness can be found in Genesis 50 verses 16 to 17. Praise God. Somebody find out for me. I need somebody to read it. Genesis 50, 16 to 17. Oh, can we get it on the screen? Genesis 50, 16 to 17. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Hallelujah. The word forgiveness in this passage of scripture is a word that is translated no saw. It means to lift up. It means to extol. It means to magnify. It means to show respect. And it means to show esteem. This word from a, a Hebrew perspective no saw 
He's not just telling us just to forgive, but to extol the person. The person who has wronged you, you've got to lift them up. You've got to speak well of them. You can't slander them. You've got to treat them with respect. So this is taking forgiveness to a next level. Are you hearing me? You see, God is not like man. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And you say, Lord, yes, I can forgive. But please don't ask me to esteem that man, that woman, that individual who hurt me, that individual who caused me distress, that individual who broke my heart. Please, Lord, don't tell me that I have to go that far. Huh? This is the God we serve. God is not like man. Hallelujah. 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 So the question is, before Jacob died, how could Jacob leave these instructions for his sons to ask Joseph for that type of forgiveness after what they had done to him? His brothers threw him in a pit and gave him up and left him for dead. Are you hearing me today? Can you imagine if somebody threw you in a pit and left you there to die? Jacob, before he died, he said to his sons that you, one day you are going to have to. Hallelujah. Joseph, hallelujah. You're going to have to, to, to tell Joseph that he was going to have to forgive his brothers for trying to kill him. Not just forgive them, but to not forgive them, but to extol them, to make much of them, to love on them. Can we love someone who's hurt us? Can we love someone who's done us wrong? This is the level of forgiveness that the scripture is talking about from a Hebrew perspective. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These boys were all guilty and deserving of punishment. They deserve what was coming to them for what they did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there's only one reason why Jacob could offer that type of instruction to, to, his, to, 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 to Joseph to forgive his brothers. And if we know the story of Joseph, of, of Jacob, we understand that Jacob was a deceiver and a supplanter. He stole his brother Esau's birthright and he stole his blessing. He was a thief. Some people would say, thief. Glory to God. Huh? Jacob was only able to offer the instruction about forgiveness because he himself had been forgiven. And it is only when you truly understand forgiveness that you can offer that type of forgiveness to somebody else. So when we understand that we have been forgiven, there is no scenario, no situation, no issue that we should not be able to forgive. When I think about the goodness of God and all that he has done for me, my soul has to cry out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. I don't know if some of you were thieves. I don't know if some of you are robbers. I don't know if some of you are bad mind. I don't know if some of you are backstabbers. But when you begin to think about the forgiveness that God has shown you through his son, Jesus Christ, you better be able to forgive somebody else. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. It is only when we receive 
the type of forgiveness that Jacob received, it is only then are you able to truly forgive someone. Can someone truly say that they can truly forgive someone without knowing Christ? Why? Why? That is a theological, well, it's not even a theological debate, really. Can one truly say that you have truly forgiven someone according to God's standard? Because like I said, it's not our standard. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our. It's not our, our standard. It is God's standard. But we have to come in line with what God wants for us. Hallelujah. So we have to understand forgiveness ourselves from an Old Testament perspective in order to forgive others. And when we break into the New Testament, we see some parallels. Hallelujah. And like I said earlier, it's only when we fully acknowledge and understand the forgiveness that Jesus died to give us. Are we then able to extend that forgiveness to others? So no matter where you have been, no matter what you've been through, no matter what has been done to you, God is asking his people to forgive. You know, sometimes the hardest people to forgive are the, closest, the people who are closest to you. Nobody can get to you like family. True? Huh? Family. Those who you expect to be closest to you. Those who you least expect to have it, have it that you will ever have to forgive. But more often than not, it is the ones that are close to us that break our hearts the most. True? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus said in Matthew 6 and verse 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you. Forgiveness from a Greek perspective it's a word, word entitled afiegi. And it means to let alone. It means to put away. It means to divorce yourself from the issue. It means to let it go. Hallelujah. And if you can't forgive, the scripture says, God cannot forgive you. <laughs> I are you hearing me today, somebody? The scripture says that if you cannot forgive, then God himself cannot forgive you. So then that throws up another theological argument. Can a lack of forgiveness, hallelujah, prevent you from making it in to the kingdom. Question. Do you feel that a lack of forgiveness can prevent you from making it in to the kingdom? Mm. Yeah, I, 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 are, you, are you sure? You think? Okay. All right. Okay. So that means then that me... Roger Maynard, through all those years of battling with my issue with my father, trying to come to a place of forgiveness in my heart for him, does that mean then that if I had died, God forbid, does that mean that I would have gone to a Christless eternity? You still agree with that? No, of course not. My salvation is based on the finished work of Christ. It's not based on what I do and what I don't do. It's based on what he has done for me. Amen? So my lack of forgiveness, you see, it's like this. Forgiveness, as I said earlier, it can be instantaneous. And pray God that everyone who has a forgiveness issue will deal with it instantly. But for others of us like me, I had to work with the Holy Spirit. 
He is the paraclete, the scripture says. The one who comes alongside of us in our time of need. It is he who comes alongside me and he who helps me in my time of need. He encourages me. He strengthens me. He walks with me. He speaks with me. And he helps me to get to that point eventually. When I say, Lord... I submit my will to your will. And I have now got to that place where I can say to my father, I forgive you. Some of us today are battling with forgiveness issues. But if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, please don't listen to, please don't believe that unforgiveness is going to take you to hell because it won't. The finished work of Christ, the blood of Jesus is already upon you. The scripture here, I believe, is talking about those individuals who have a lack of understanding. Those individuals who can never come to the point of forgiveness. They have said in their heart, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heart posture. When your heart says, there is no way on the God's green earth that I am going to forgive you. Nothing anybody says to me is going to change my mind. I will never, ever forgive you. Those are the individuals I believe that the scripture is talking about when it says that if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. It's someone who has a heart posture, a re unregenerated heart. Because you see, if at all you have the Holy Ghost, the scripture tells us that a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. Are you hearing me today? So I believe that a good tree is those who have committed and submitted their lives to the Lordship of Christ. It doesn't mean that you can't do anything wrong. It doesn't mean that you can't say anything bad. It doesn't mean that. Hallelujah. But it's saying that because of your position in Christ, fruit takes time to develop. Eh? We're talking about a heart posture. Fruit takes time to develop. So if you continually develop a hard heart, hallelujah, when it comes to forgiveness, and you, and you will refuse to move from that place, that suggests to me that your heart is unregenerated and you have never known the Christ at all. How can a true believer who understands the forgiveness of God declare that they could never, ever forgive someone? It is impossible. Are you hearing me? A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. Just like a bad tree cannot produce an unregenerated heart. Cannot over time produce good fruit. So if you're bad mind and you have a bad heart, you don't expect good fruit to come from them. It's a heart position. Are you hearing me today, somebody? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. It's like the scripture. Where he says, but Lord, Lord, did I not cast out demons in your name? Huh? Did, I not, did I not prophesy in your name? And the Lord says, depart from me because I knew you not. You can come in church and you can prophesy. You can come in church and cast out demons, but your heart is still far from him. Your heart is still unregenerated. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew 18 verses 21 to 35, the, st the story of the unforgiving servant. Praise God that we read earlier. A story of the unforgiving servant is preceded by Peter asking Jesus how many times he should forgive his brother who sins against him. 
And Peter says it with pride, you know. Seven times, Lord. Shall I forgive my brother if he's done something, done me wrong? Jesus says, I do not say seven, but I say 70 times seven. What is that? 300 and something times that you're supposed to forgive your brother. Well, who's going to offend you that many times? But then again, some people come close. Amen. Some people come close to that. Huh? But what a scripture, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I hear that one deep come from your boots, brother. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what the scripture is telling us is that we ought to be in a continual, perpetual mindset when it comes to forgiving. We ought to forgive freely, easily. Every single time that somebody has done us wrong. Because we want to be in right standing with God. Amen. Huh? If, if you want to be in right standing with men and you cuss, you go on bad. Yeah? When somebody upsets you. Uh, don't forgive them. Huh? But that is going to take you outside of alignment with the will of God. I can hear people thinking. I can almost see in your minds you're thinking, boy, there's that person. Oh, I need to <laughs> But I say to you this today. <laughs> Hello, I say to you today. You've got to forgive them. You've got to let it go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus then goes on to say that the unforgiving servant... He had been forgiven a huge debt. Hallelujah. The Bible says of 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents is a huge amount of money. It equates to something in the millions today. This is what we're talking about here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This man had this massive debt. And he couldn't repay. Hallelujah. And he begged for forgiveness. Hallelujah. He couldn't by no means afford to repay the debt that he owed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then when he was forgiven, himself forgiven, he refused to forgive someone who owed him a paltry sum in comparison. Hallelujah. It's like you owe him, owe him me a million pounds. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I say, you know what? I forgive you the debt. I'll let you off. Huh? And then me, knowing that I, am owe, I owe somebody a small sum of money, I'm putting pressure on them to give me back what they owe me. When you have received such a great forgiveness, you ought always to be ready to forgive others. If I would ask you, if you could repay the debt, hallelujah, that Christ's sacrifice paid for you, hallelujah, you couldn't repay it. And you know you couldn't repay it. It is far too great for us to repay. Why then can't we forgive someone who has probably done us far less? The Christian's mandate is to forgive. Ephesians 4 and verse 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Hallelujah. But not forgiving someone may not be a heaven or hell issue, but it will affect your relationship with God. Are you hearing me today, someone? Being unforgiving, not forgiving someone may not send you to hell, but the one thing it will do is affect your relationship with God. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Unforgiveness will oftentimes affect you more than it will the perpetrator who did the wrong. Are you hearing me today, somebody? Bless God. 
We're going to look now at the consequences of unforgiveness on the spirit man, on the soulish man, and on the physical body. I'm just going to run through this quickly. I've got seven minutes. The spiritual consequences of unforgiveness. One, you will grieve the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? If you walk around with unforgiveness in your heart, you will grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 and 30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Remember, the Holy Spirit is a person with a personality. And anything we do that is outside of the holy lifestyle we are meant to be living can grieve him. Unforgiveness is included in that. The Holy Spirit is our guide, he's our teacher and our help. He helps us deal with the complexities of life. He brings the word of God to our remembrance. If we are born again, it is he who will remind us when we have that need to forgive. I remember not long after I got, after I got saved, Steve. And my brothers will tell you that I wasn't an easy guy growing up. It wasn't easy. And I was living with my now deceased brother Mark at the time. Not long being saved. And I remember he did something that really annoyed me. <laughs> the sanctific sanctification process hadn't started its perfect work in me at the time. So don't judge me. Okay. Like you ain't done the same. The sanctification was still working on me. He did something that I tell you, Steve, I curse him. I told him some things. Now, had that been pre-salvation, it would have had no effect whatsoever on me. But because I had now been saved, and I had the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. All I felt as soon as the words came out of my mouth was a scratching on the inside. Saying, brother, I tell you, I had no peace. I couldn't rest. One time before I tell you about whatever, uh, your what's it not and all the rest of it. And I wouldn't care a thing. Nobody couldn't tell me nothing. But the Holy Ghost on the inside. Mm, 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 mm. He started to scratch me on the inside and said, brother, you need to go and seek restitution. You need to go and put that right. And I went up to my brother later on in the day. I couldn't take it no more. And I said, Mark. Locked ya. I said, Mark, I'm sorry for what I said. I tell him, my brother looked at me. I used to say, you, Roger Maynard, apologizing to me. I didn't take back no talk. But the Holy Ghost on the inside, he did a work. And I tell you, Steve, not too long after that. Mark gave his heart to Jesus. Being Holy Ghost filled doesn't mean you're not going to say the wrong thing. Doesn't mean you're not going to do the wrong thing. But when you do, when you feel that scratching on the inside, Sister Hazel, when your mommy, 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 when you feel the scratching on the inside, you got to go and do something about it because you won't sleep at night. You won't have no peace. You won't have no comfort until you turn and do what is right in God's sight. Can I get an amen in this house? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I haven't run the aisles for a while. I feel tired. Oh, the Holy Ghost. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Working on the inside. Hallelujah. There's no hiding place when you, when you have unforgiveness in your heart. Because the Holy Ghost will continue to bring that thing back to your remembrance until you make it right. And there is no peace. No comfort until you say, Lord, 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 I submit my will to your will. I got to go to that individual. Some of you guys who are in the sound of my voice today, there is an individual at work. There is an individual at home. There is an individual somewhere in the marketplace that you know you need to go to. 
Huh? It's not a heaven or hell issue, but it will hinder your spiritual growth. It will hinder your spiritual life if you don't make it right. Hallelujah. 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 A refusal to forgive means that sometimes God, the Holy Ghost just kind of slips away from you. The scripture says he never leave you nor forsake you. He's not going nowhere permanently, you know. But sometimes the Holy Ghost just needs to take a little step back and leave you to yourself. And say, listen, you go and deal with that. And until you deal with that, don't expect me to come and come close to you again and be in total communion to you. Because you're living in rebellion to me. Are you hearing me today, somebody? Somebody needs to forgive someone. Somebody needs to let it go. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. When you're in that state of unforgiveness, it also opens a door of opportunity for Satan to sneak in and to cause havoc. Open doors. Unforgiveness will open up a door in your life where the enemy, anytime you have open doors, the enemy can just come marching in with his big size tens and big boof boof self. He will come in and cause havoc in your life because you've left that door of unforgiveness open. Are you hearing me today? And some of us are going through trials and tribulations because we have unforgiveness in our heart because we won't deal with the matter. And the enemy is riding roughshod all over us. You need to deal with it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Satan, he will come and he will lie to you. And he also will tell you that there is no one else facing what you have had. Huh? He will tell you you have a right to keep your, your hard heart. Because you see what was done to you, nobody else has been through that. Amen? Nobody else has been through that. Huh? That's what the enemy lies and tells you. Huh? You're on your own. You know, Nobody else has faced that, what you're going through. But I guarantee you, glory to God, that there are many others out there who are going through the very same thing that you are going through. Are you hearing me today? Because the devil is a liar. I come to declare today that Satan is a liar from the pit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's a liar. Uh, he, the enemy will tell you that you have the right to that grievance and encourage you not to let it go. Hallelujah. Compromise begins to set in and you leave yourself open to an escalation in your sinful activities. Because when you don't do what the Holy Ghost en encourages you to do, sometimes it can lead to other situations because you haven't dealt with that. It can open a door that leads you into other situations of sin in your behavioral patterns. So you need to deal with it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Unforgiveness leads to bitterness. And bitterness always needs an outlet. A bitter person will always express it one way or another. Hallelujah. And sometimes that bitterness can come out and rear its head when you least expect it. In your attitude, in your countenance, just the way you look. Sometimes your behavioral patterns can all change. Why? Because you have left that door open. The enemy has barged in. And it's starting to escalate in your life. You need to let it go and you need to deal with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three, and I'm coming down. <laughs> Refusal to forgive will allow the anointing on one's life to become suspended. Are you hearing me? The scripture says the gifts of God are irrevocable. God does not take back his gifts. He will not take back that which he has given to you. But you can lose the power for effective ministry. You know, sometimes people can preach with things in their heart and the word can go forth. But it lacks the power that it ought to have because there is something going on with the preacher. And it can also happen with those who play music and those who sing. Unforgiveness will stop the anointing of God to, from flowing fully in your life. You need to deal with it. You need to let it go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
for he hinders your fellowship with God. We have fellowship with God through our prayer life. Unforgiveness hinders our prayers. Are you hearing me? Unforgiveness will hinder your prayer. Psalm 66 and verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So you can pray till you're blue in the face. If you have got unforgiveness in your heart, the scripture, unforgiveness is classed as an, a type of iniquity. Glory to God. If you have that in your heart, it's going to block your prayers from God hearing you. You need to deal with it. And you need to let it go. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's how unforgiveness affects us from a spiritual perspective. I'm coming down. I said that three times. <laughs> Lack of forgiveness can affect the soulish man. You know the soulish part of you? You are a tripartite being. Did you know that? In line with the triune God. Uh, the three components to God. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Three personalities. Are you hearing me? You are a tripartite being. Your spirit, your soul, and you live in a body. Yeah? The real you is not what you see, what I see. Mommy, as pretty as you are. Yeah? That is not the real you. <laughs> but you are pretty and don't you don't you say otherwise you hear me don't you dare you are fearfully and wonderfully made sister glasmin i said you are fearfully and wonderfully made there's nobody like you praise god you are unique glory to god hallelujah so you have a you have a spirit you have a soul and you live in a housing called a body Unforgiveness affects you spiritually, like I've just mentioned. It can also affect the soulish part of you. The soulish part of man, the intellect, the emotions, and the will are all affected by unforgiveness. Intellectual decision-making can become impaired by the weight of not forgiving. Your, your thought processes can be impaired because you haven't forgiven. The emotional turmoil, turmoil brought on by unforgiveness can also lead to an infection. That can affect your whole life. As I said earlier, bitterness takes hold of you. Well, that can lead to sarcasm and to condemnation of the perpetrator. You know, when somebody do you wrong, you know, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, it can lead to you talking all manner of things about that individual. And praise God, but not, not praise God, but when you find somebody else who will come and partner with you and listen into your level of conversation about that individual, you are quick too quick sometimes to share what and what that person's done how that person behaved if you ever hear the, the way that they the, 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 the way they treated me if you ever did see the way that they handled me that's what happens huh when you are emotionally damaged through through unforgiveness it always seeks an outlet and you'll always be looking for somebody else to come and partner with you Oh, in condemning that person who you think has forgiven you. Some of us do it all the time. We make a lifestyle out of it. We make it a habit sometimes of condemning people who have done us wrong. You better let it go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anger begins to rage in you. Emotions run wild. Revenge, revenge begins to enter into your heart. And your flesh, the old you, begins to take control. The... The, I am going to make them pay. <laughs> ah, I'm going to get them back. Huh? Also affects the emotional state of the unforgiver. Stress levels rise. When you see the perpetrator, are you hearing me today? When you see that individual who has hurt you, when you see them, the stress levels just start to go up. But you know, when you forgive somebody, when you truly forgive them with the love of God and you let that situation go, you know when you have truly forgiven someone, when you see that individual and the, your stress levels do not rise, seeing them does not affect you whether good or bad, you see them and you can greet them and you say praise the Lord. You can even offer them a cup of tea. You can even love on them. Are you hearing me? When you have truly forgiven someone, everything goes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Last point, and I'm closing with this. 
No, two points to go. Unforgiveness on the body. We talked about the spirit man, the soulish man. You know, unforgiveness also affects your body, your physical body. Dr. Robert Enright from the University of Wisconsin, he founded the International Forgiveness Institute and is considered the initiator of the forgiveness studies. Recent work focused on what type of person would be the most forgiving. Results show that people who were most hostile and angry in life were less likely to forgive even after a long time. The studies also show that people who forgive are healthier and happier than those who hold resentment. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. The, the <laughs> and I believe you live a longer life. You know, stress is a killer. You know, when you've got somebody up in your heart, as they say, it can kill you, you know. Huh? It can, it, can, it can start working on the inside of you eh? and start to cause damage internally because you haven't dealt with it. Hallelujah. 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 Study also showed that people who are taught how to forgive become less angry. They feel that I'm closing with this. I promise you, I am closing with this. The benefits then of forgiveness. One, it helps you to come to a place of spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is often gained in the hard times. Are you hearing me? That is when you will become most spiritually mature. Not in the mountain top experience, but oftentimes in the valley experiences of life. That is where you will learn the most lessons in the hard times. Joseph, David, Daniel, all developed in hard situations. Forgiveness can be seen as a hard thing to do. But once done, it will successfully help you to mature in your spirit man. Two, it will release you from conflict and emo emotional turmoil. Joyce Meyer, anybody know Joyce Meyer? Praise the Lord. Revealed that her father had raped her over 200 times as a child or an adolescent. My God, have mercy. She grew up bitter, angry, and very frustrated. When she was able to forgive her father, she was instantly released from the bondage of unforgiveness. Instantly released from the bondage of unforgiveness. And you would have thought, having gone through all of that, how can anyone forgive someone for that? Only God. Only God. And sometimes we think that we are holding on to unforgiveness with our little, little situations. Look what she went through. And she found forgiveness. But you still will not let go of that thing. That those words that somebody spoke over you as a child. That incident that happened to you as a child. You refuse to let it go. Today I say, in order to align yourself with the will of God let it go. I was reading somewhere the other day that incest is a huge problem and has always been a huge problem. It is one of those things that is the more least likely situation that adult human beings will talk about. Not because they were abused, but because who the abuser was. Yeah? But yet, even in the midst of that, and there are still people carrying that today, you know. Even today, even in maybe in the sound of my voice, people are still carrying that spirit. And they have never, ever forgiven the abuser for what they went through. I'm sorry to be hard today, but God is saying to me today, you got to let it go. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. You can enjoy that sense of emotional release that comes when the burden of a grudge has been melted away. You can enjoy the feeling of mercy and goodwill if you will just let it go. Hallelujah. Two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The benefits of forgiveness, it teaches you humility and compassion. Three, it restores and maintains a right relationship with God. It brings you back into alignment with God. 
and it teaches you obedience to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A forgiving person is one who out of a profound sense of being personally forgiven, a great debt by God, is quick to ask forgiveness from another. And I'm closing with this. <laughs> Nelson Mandela is perhaps the best 20th century example of how to forgive. 27 years of incarceration, longest serving political prisoner in the world has ever known. He told his people to forgive their former oppressors. Mandela chose a path of forgiveness rather than revenge. Forgiveness is the Christian's duty, praise God, but it eventually becomes a delight. When you do it, it will become delightful. If you hate, you give your enemy your heart and your mind, as Mandela says. Don't give these things away. Don't give anybody your heart and your mind. Today is the day that we're going to let it go. Please be upstanding with me. Praise God. Anthony, I don't have a song on my, on my heart, but I'm asking you if you do. Oh, glory to God. Because I believe that we need to pray for somebody in this house today. Somebody in the sound of my voice. I know I've gone on a little bit today. Praise God. But I feel that I needed to release everything that the Lord gave to me in order to help to release somebody today. You know who you are. And you know what you need. You know what you've been carrying for such a long time. But today is the day we're going to finally let it go. Family issues that have been riding your spirit for X amount of years. You've been carrying that burden of unforgiveness for family members. Today we're going to let it go. That person who inappropriately did what they did. Today we're going to let it go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. To Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. Hallelujah. I will ever Hallelujah. love and trust. Hallelujah. Just come, just come. Just come, just come, just come. Presence Father, 
in the name of your son Jesus Christ we come to you this afternoon father as your children have gathered around this holy and hallowed altar father they have come oh god with their needs they have responded oh god to the word oh lord that has been preached in this house i am a mere vessel lord god releasing that into the atmosphere which thou has prompted me to do and so holy ghost we ask you right now to do your part oh god that you would minister lord god to every individual at this holy place right now father your children have come lord god of their own volition nobody has dragged them to this place lord god but they come because they recognize lord god something in the word oh lord has touched them and touched their hearts and they have come oh lord to this place for their release today i pray holy ghost that you would begin to do a deeper work in the hearts of the hearers that you would minister life lord god where death once reigned lord we pray that each and every one heavenly father who may have unforgiveness in their heart will let it go heavenly father they will drop it at this altar and when they return to their seat lord god they will recognize that they have released their problem unto you you are the meter of needs you are the holy spirit the paraclete the one who comes alongside those who have their needs and so holy ghost we pray that you would minister minister to your children right now right across this altar lord right across this auditorium even those who haven't come but they know lord god that they have a need regarding unforgiveness we pray lord god that you would walk the aisles holy spirit do what only you can do touch each and every heart who needs you today and we are praying lord god that there shall be a change in their circumstances there will be a change lord god in their situation they will leave this place lord god change from how they came in because the word of god has ministered life to them and so father god i pray in the name of jesus christ that each and every one at this altar today will begin to come into alignment with your will for their life and every blockage and unforgiveness has brought to them lord we pray that you remove it right now in the name of jesus we speak victory over them we speak life over to them we speak life oh god we speak a change in their circumstances and that they will from this day forward never be the same again for every victim lord god of abuse that is unforgiven where the perpetrator still lives in the head of any individual lord we pray lord god that you would remove that face from their dreams remove that face lord god that they see ever before them remove that anxiety that they are feeling in their spirit remove it lord god and give them a fresh start from this day forward satan we come to serve you notice this day that you will no longer invade the space of these of god's children but as they learn and walk in forgiveness so their lives will be transformed from this day forward for every abuser lord we pray that they too would find oh god themselves in a place where they too can ask you for forgiveness for all that they have done father we commit them to you right now wherever they are whoever they are holy ghost we pray that you would arrest them in the name of jesus christ arrest them hallelujah and cause them to bow the knee and to give their lives to you and that they would seek forgiveness for their actions in the name of jesus 
Father, we commit and commend your people to you. And we thank you for the mighty work that you will be doing in their hearts. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. And we thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts for that today is a new day in Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon your people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Go back to your seats with a shout of praise. Giving God thanks for the change. Hallelujah. For the change. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just before we go, this just I'd just like to ask the men, if you can, before we leave. There are holy chairs around the back there are just driving me mad every time I come and see them. I'm just asking the men, please, if you can just take those red chairs that are around the back and take them around to the room next to the kitchen and put them behind the partition, please. If you can do that for me, the Lord will bless you as you do so. Please be upstanding as we pronounce the benediction. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all for now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please remember next week, the administrative bishop is here. So please come early. We're going to be starting our service at 11 o'clock on the dot. Amen. So please come early. Come to Sunday school at 10 o'clock if you can't. Can. If you can't, please be here for quarter to 11 so that we are seated and ready to go at 11 o'clock. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your loved ones, bring them come. Praise God. Will and all tabernacle is the place where God lives. And the administrative bishop, we're going to see that next week, that indeed he does live here. WV13, one Papa Bravo. That is the address where the Holy Ghost lives. And the administrative bishop, we're going to see that next week. So please come out in your numbers next week. God bless you. Enjoy your day.